Okay, so for this video, we're going to go over the IRS form 1125E. This is a form that's included with either an S-Corp return or an 1120 corporate return, and it's used to disclose compensation paid to officers of a company, right? So this is your CEO, CFO, COO, any kind of officer title with a company that is on the payroll. If you meet certain uh, limitations or thresholds during the year for your gross receipts, then you have to include this form and separately state how much you're compensating those officers, right? Um, so generally, 1125E is used to separately report compensation of officers where the company's total gross receipts exceed $500,000 during the year, okay? Now, the how you calculate gross receipts depends on the type of return filed. So for example, if we're doing a corporate return here um, on 1120, the gross receipts figure is calculated by adding line 1A and then line 4, and then line 10 lastly, right? Um, so it's a different computation if you were looking at, let's say, an 1120S corporate return. So it's important to read the instructions depending on what type of return you're filing to make sure you're calculating that number correctly. So now let's look at an example here, and then we'll look at uh, an, an example form 1125E on uh, the next slide here. So we have... John Doe, he's the CEO and director of a, of a Delaware corporation, so Fake Consulting Company, Inc. Uh, John's total compensation for the year is $125,000. That's what he gets paid as a CEO. Now, the company did $1.25 million in gross receipts, um, and so under the computation above, the company is required to attach 1125E to this corporate tax return. Okay, now on 1125E, the company has to disclose a couple of things. They have to disclose John's name, his social security number, the percentage of time he works for the company, and how much stock he owns, right? And then lastly, his total compensation. So the total amount of compensation is then going to be reported on page one of Form 1120, line 12, and that's going to be comp for officers. So let's look at the 1125E. Uh, it's relatively straightforward, right? We're just listing the name of off the, each officer, all their other information, and the amount of compensation. So in this case, um, we're only doing it for John, right? He's the CEO. This is assuming there's no other CFO or COO. He's just uh, doing everything himself. Uh, but if you did have multiple officers, you would have to list every single officer here and then all their other information. So we've got John, his social security number, he spends 100% of his time working for the company, um, and that's how much stock he owns. He owns 25% of common stock, no, no preferred stock issued, so 0% there, and then his total compensation. So the total amount of compensation here for all the officers should foot down to line two, um, and then this line four figure here is going to flow through to page one, line 12, right? So this is a deductible expense for the corporation. All right, so that covers it. Again, it's a pretty straightforward form. It's just important to make sure that um, you do attach this if you're required, right? Because again, if you're not following all the instructions and if you miss a form, um, the IRS is never really happy about that, right? They can assess penalties um, for failing to include all required forms and schedules when you file your tax return. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave me a comment below and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.